Hello YouTube, it's me, Asiel Baez Onyade, here making another video for you guys, and today we're going to be talking about uh, developing Orisha spirituality. Um, it has come to my um, personal attention, and I have noticed throughout the years as I've met people, other Orisha priests and priestesses, uh, I have noticed the lack of spirituality that we have in this religion. Uh, lack of a spiritual practice, for for better words, is what I want to get to. Um, uh, just so we are clear, once again, these are my personal opinions. This is just stuff that I have noticed. Uh, not everyone may share the same opinions as me, but this is... Uh, it's my way of trying to fix the world we live in. So, anyways, um, I also want to make it clear that the stuff that I will be talking about today and the solutions that I find or, or that I want to propose and teach um, are basic practices that I personally do that, you know, not everyone has a strict spiritual practice like I do, but practices can be adapted. So I just want to get across that um, these are my personal opinions, and I w I'm putting into words my spiritual practice. My spiritual practice is that I'm an eclectic, spiritually focused, monastic Odisha priest in search of ultimate spiritual enlightenment and complete surrender and union with God and Orishas. So that's me, that's my, that's how I describe my spirituality. Okay, and how I have developed it to the point that I have it now and how I try and teach it to my Godchildren and how I try and teach it to people that come around me and on a daily basis or how I try to just view the world. Um, so I've noticed that in our religion, in African based religions, uh, there's a big lack of spirituality compared to other religions like Hinduism, like Buddhism, uh, to some extent Christianity, um, and other religions, even Candomblé, for example, which is a sister religion of uh, mind, which I would say Lukumi, um, their system of spirituality is so much more highly developed than ours, okay? People have began to move towards the spiritual away from the physical in order to live in a more community-based, healthy, nature-connected lifestyle. Whereas it seems that us in the Santeria community are still stuck on fighting and arguing about who's right and who's wrong and what house or ile has the correct ceremony and who has the correct fundamental and you know. We are so caught up in all of these things that I have just noticed that everyone has just simply been losing the whole point of what religion is, of what spirituality is, and the point of initiating into Orisha. Um, so yeah, so that's what this video is all about. Um, so why is, it, why is spirituality so important? You know, Spirituality is not for everyone, and I understand that it's not, and there's people that are naturally spiritual like me, who have a big monastic calling, there's other people who are just simply spiritual, there's just people who are simply fanatic, and there's just people who simply don't care. Uh, we are each exactly what we need to be, that's the whole point, okay? Ori. The point is Ori. Ori, the inner spirit, chose to come down to this earth in this reincarnation and you are exactly where you need to be. 
how are you going to get to where you need to be, then you need to follow your path. You need to follow your passions. Okay? That is at least how it's how I teach it, how it's been described to me, how I internalize it. Um, so Ori is the inner self. The we're gonna say, we're gonna just call it the human spirit. And sorry, because I'm talking a lot, I need water. Um, so well, uh, for those of you who are more spiritually inclined who have come into this religion, it is good to develop a spiritual connection with Orisha. It is good to develop a spiritual connection with your egoons so that we can break the illusion, the illusion of separation that we constantly have. It is time for the Orisha community to come together instead of continuously being separated. Okay? It doesn't matter which way it's done, it matters that it gets done and that Orisha worship continues. Okay, there's so many people arguing, for example, whether for a local you make seven palenquetas or you make nine palenquetas. Who cares? That's my personal opinion. When we go into your home and we're doing something in your home and you do seven palenquetas, then I will make seven palenquetas and we do your ceremony with seven palenquetas. And when you come into my home, we will make nine palenquetas and we'll do the ceremony with nine palenquetas. At the end of the day, what matters is that Orisha continues and what matters is that Orisha is done right. The ceremonies need to be done with love and respect. And that is what a lot of ceremonies are lacking nowadays. It's There's a constant thing between Santeros that we all want to be right and we all want to be the high and mighty and the one who knows more that we lack the spirituality and then when we do ceremonies we spend more time arguing instead of the Ibolu than we spend time actually being faithful and being respectful to the Orishas in front. I hope I got my point across with that. Um, so your way is just simply your way. My way is my way. There's no right way and we all constantly talk about that but very few people put that into actual perspective into daily lively use. What works for me may not work for you. What works for you may not work for me. We all need to understand that. Um, another reason why we need to develop more spirituality is we have become very focused on the physicality of the Orishas. We have lost spirituality in the sense of connecting with the Orisha. Okay, almost everyone nowadays is like, you know, you are at work and you need to talk to, something happens at work and you're like, oh my god, I need to talk to Ochun because Ochun is my mother. The first thing that people constantly do is to forget that Orisha is already within us. And then all they want to do is just rush to the house so that they can open the sopera, so they can ring the bell, so that they can touch things, so that they can, you know. So many people forget that Orisha is instilled in your head, especially your crown. The Ache is within us and the Ache is outside of us and around us and everywhere. And everyone that has gone through an Orisha ceremony carries the Ache. And I have noticed that, that so many people forget that, that you have Ache, Ache has been instilled within you, it's in your head and it's all in your body. Ache is what you breathe in, it's the prana, it's the chi, it's the universal force of, you know, the other stuff, you know, you guys know what I mean, it's the energy, it's God, it's the goddess, it's the essence. So. That's the first thing, you know, it's the lack of notion and the lack of knowledge that Ashe is already within you, Orisha is already within you. We can speak to Orisha anywhere, you know. Learn to speak to Orisha in the car. Learn to speak to Orisha 
as you are walking, learn to speak to Orisha as you're cooking, learn to speak to Orisha as you're doing whatever activity. It doesn't matter what you're doing, your connection should always be maintained. Especially with your crown, having a sincere conversation with your crown in a stressful moment may be the best thing that you could ever do because at that point you can think of your 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 crowning orisha and think and see how they will react and take the right way of reacting um, and building spirituality creates a calmer uh, a more calm person I don't know what word I was going to say there but uh, I, I, you know, a more calm mind, it'll help us all to live more righteously. The point of initiating into this religion is to change your lifestyle. And this is another point that seems to be missing out of so many people's spiritual practice and, and, and spiritual knowledge. You know, when you go through the ceremony of initiation, it's not just because kaboom I'm just gonna start doing brujeria and I'm just gonna start doing whatever and I'm invincible and now my life is perfect like that is such a big mistake and I don't know how many times I'm gonna say it to people and get it across to people that it goes in through one ear and come, comes out the other but that is always because of the lack of spirituality that we have you know, everyone thinks that initiating into Orisha religion, you automatically just become this person that can never get fired from work. You're never going to lose your house. You are never going to get run over by a car. You know, because that doesn't happen to the Christians, and that doesn't happen to the Wiccans, and that doesn't happen to the Muslims, and, you know, that doesn't happen to anyone besides us. So, like, I don't understand. I don't understand when people initiate just for the lack of protection and for because they want to be powerful and because they want to be frightful and those are wrong reasons for initiating into religion period okay when you go through the initiation of uh, of uh, Kariyosha you are breaking the old to begin with the new. You are newborn people. That means that you need to stop your old habits that are bad and start a righteous life together with your Orisha. Um, it is not until you guys just simply stop and take time to actually connect with Orisha that and with God and the ultimate source that things like this I guess won't become clear in your mind but you guys need to really take a break and think about this stuff you know religion is about being righteous religion is about helping religion is about living a good life religion is about living in, in peace and so is this religion so is Orisha's re uh, Orisha religion um, now everyone just all people want to do is just uh, sacrifice or charge more money this person charged 2,000 so now I'm going to charge 5,000 and the next one's going to charge 10,000 and do things wrong or people just want to simply go ahead and uh, be the best you know everyone has seems to me that has lost the point of religion. You know, we are here to help each other and when you initiate into priesthood, it's for you to be a better human being. It's for you to help other people. It's for you to help yourself and for you to help your family. It's for you to live in union with God, with union with Orisha and in reverence of your ancestors and teaching the new generations and the new people that you initiate and the new people that come into your life and the new people that have nothing to do with religion but you will lead by example with the people in the street that is what religion is about that is what initiation is about 
It's about being righteous. It's about changing the world to a better place. It is not about scamming. It is not about charging thousands upon thousands upon thousands of money for you to open a business. It is not about you being more powerful and more demanding and more, uh, you know, just knowledgeable than everyone else. The knowledge is spread throughout the world and no one carries the correct knowledge. No one religion has the correct way. Every religion is a way. Every person has a little bit of the knowledge. We all know that and we all, as priests and priestesses, know that that is part of Odu. That's the teaching of Odu. So as that, we all need to learn how to be respectful with each other. So anyways. So I just want to get across that Orisha is a religion of positivity and prosperity, of union with God and Orisha. Um, another thing that I want to get across is people need to learn how to be more worship, worshipful. Is that even a word? I don't know if that's even a word. But people learn to how to worship more. Okay, Orisha is a beautiful religion and it's a loving and fun religion okay it is about dancing when we do events and when we do ceremonies if you guys notice every ceremony involves music singing dancing involves movement people we have lost that essence also people go into the ceremonies and people are gossiping or people don't sing or they're just like on the phone or just you know come on people seriously take your time and learn some of the songs if you can not learn everything and I understand that most of the songs can be hard because they're in a different language than English or Spanish or whatever you speak and and whatever language it actually is because I most of the songs we sing I don't even think really match anymore to the original Yoruba but or similar or whatever anyway everyone sings differently but at least if you try and you learn some of the songs you can actually participate for real you know when we go into a ceremony or when we go into a bembe a widow or something like that that is supposed to be time of worship that is supposed to be a time in which you're communing with the Orisha and with the other spirits and with the other Orishas around. That is not a time for, for you guys to be sitting down and talking about la novela and gossiping about the other Sandero, what he's wearing and flirting with each other and you know talking about business and that is supposed to be time of worship. Our religion, our way of worship is by singing and dancing. The Orishas come down singing and dancing. They come down laughing. They come down happy. Even Ochun, when she comes down crying, you all know she is her way. So, you you know, people get involved in the religion. Learn the songs. Learn some of the dances. You know, if you don't know the songs, if you don't know the dance, then you clap and you move from side to side. You know? Don't dance dal sa uh, salsa, don't dance merengue in front of a tambor, like, you know, that's, time for, that's for discotecas and, or clubs and for whatever. You know, when you go to a tambor or when you go to something like that, or when you go to someone else's initiation, pay respect to their crown and pay respect to their person. Go there and actually participate. Go there and get involved. Put your phone aside, put it on vibrate. You know, people are not going to die, hopefully, because you don't pick up the phone. But you need to take a break to, your, to be spiritual, to pay attention to what you're doing inside of the room. Um, sing, participate, okay? Learn to move the energy. That's how the Orishas come down. I cannot stand that when we go, or when I've gone into an Igbolu, and when the main part comes, people are just like standing there and I'm like yo seriously people there's no energy in this room 
I don't know. I don't know if I, I, no one feels as passionate as I do, but when you go into an initiation, please pay attention and just freaking participate. And if not, get out and give this job to someone else. And stop going into initiations just going thinking about the little money that you're going to get paid. For one, pay attention, people. Let's pay attention and come as a community. I understand that we all need money. Yes, unfortunately, in this society that we live in, money is a must-have in order to survive. That does not mean that you can only go into religion and think about money. That is the wrong reasons to go into religion. It's a nice incentive to go and get paid. It's beautiful and it should happen because you are it's back-breaking labor and initiation and, and stuff in Odisha. But however, that's not the right reason to go. When you go, go with a worshipping mentality. Please take a break from society, take a break from personal life, and go into the spiritual. So, so I have two quotes for you guys that are personal quotes of mine, and I just want to share them with the world. Because it's quotes that I say to my godchildren, and it's quotes that I say to myself. Need a break. So. The first quote is, when you open to the divine, the divine will open to you. And the second quote will explain the, the, the first one better. It's not about seeing to believe, it's about believing to be free. Uh, spirituality is not a science. Spirituality is not a thing that you can explain with rational 2 plus 2 equals 4. Okay. To me, spirituality is purple, and to you, spirituality is white, and to the next person, spirituality is red. We're all individuals. We all work differently. And it's not until you take the time to actually open and find out what your personal path is, that the path won't show itself to you. I consider myself an eclectic pagan. I consider myself an eclectic monastic priest. I consider myself nothing and I consider myself everything. But that's me because I have, I don't know, I have a, a high spiritual calling and a spiritual whatever. More than other people do. But other people who follow religion correctly live a regular normal life and simply do the right thing. That's all religion is about. It's doing the right thing so that your life is happy and everyone else's life around you is happy. It's learning to be content and learning to be grateful. You guys need to learn the power of gratitude. And, and I always tell people to learn and actually believe and trust in the law of attraction. The more negativity you think, the more negativity you attract. And that's just a natural fact. It doesn't matter whether you believe in it, whether you're Christian or Hindu or Orisha priest or whatever, Wiccan, whatever you believe is what you will attract. And until you start changing your worldview, your world will not change to you. And in the case of us, Orisha priests and priestesses, it, we need to learn to see Orisha in nature again. Orchung is not just the, uh, the owner of the river. Ochun just doesn't live in the river. Ochun is the river. Chango is the thunder. Learn to be grateful. Learn to be appreciative of the Orisha around you. Learn to be grateful of Oya for the air that you breathe, for she is the air. Okay? It, as you're walking on the street, learn to just simply look at the trees. Like, for example, if I see a framboyan tree, I say, you know, I give her thanks and I say whatever. When a breeze comes by, I remember her. When I go by four corners or crossroads, I greet an igua. Um, when you're, you know, in the case of our society, because of the way we live, when you drive over rivers and canals and stuff like that, salute of chum. When you're by the ocean, talk to Yamaya. Learn to commune in nature with Orisha because nature is God and God is nature. Orisha is nature. Nature is Orisha. We're all connected. We're all one. 
and everything is as it should be. And I don't know how I'm going to get that across to people, but I know some of you are just very hard-headed and set on your ways, but please give it a try, you know. Try and open to the spiritual so the spiritual can open to you. Um, suggestions for that, I suggest you guys uh, to start doing prayer. Um, it's funny that I have noticed that and, and not too long ago I read some uh, a post about that too. That we have become very opposed to prayer. Like there's so many people that don't pray. They just simply salute the Orisha and they're just like, hey what's up and Ochung I'm going out and whatever and that's it. And so many people don't take the time to just simply sit, you know, light a white candle and pray and just simply talk to the Orisha. Take your time to meditate. Meditation is such a wonderful tool and a stress reliever and it encourages more spirituality and it helps with all areas of life. You know, take your time and meditate with the Orisha, connect with the Orisha, hold the Orisha in your hand, hold the fundamento, hold whatever, you know, hold their eleke, um, sit in front of them and meditate, you know, connect psychically with the Orisha so that you can feel the Orisha more around you. Once you start experiencing things like that, it will just naturally occur to you to continue and it will naturally shift your consciousness to a more awake form of living. Um, I also recommend doing frequent Ebo. Um, not too long ago I sent out an Ebo to my godchildren for Osun. It's like, who works with Osun? Like Osun is usually like just kept there and you know, so I was like, it's time to work with Osun. Um, the power of Ebo is magnificent. And I encourage my godchildren, I encourage everyone to do constantly a bowl. You know, every day you can do something simple and or a couple times a week, you know. Like for example, whenever I'm throwing out clothing, um, and by throwing out I mean clothing that, you know, has holes and, and I cannot recycle because I, clothing I, you know, I always donate. I never throw out good clothing, but clothing that's like undershirts and stuff like that that have holes and stuff like that. Cleanse yourself with that. That is a piece of you that you're throwing away. You might as well do a bow with that. So grab that shirt, cleanse yourself, put it on top of an orisha and ask your orisha to remove any osobos, any, any negativity, any whatever. Leave it overnight and the next day you throw it out in the trash. Um, that's something I do, for example. Um, if you're just in the kitchen and you have extra eggs. Just grab a few eggs and cleanse yourself with the eggs. Put it there for the egg boom to cleanse negativity. You know, I don't know. Be creative, people. Do a bowl. Do frequent a bowl. And something very simple like a white candle and a glass with water works and it does wonders. And so many people have lost that. You know, everyone is always just constantly thinking about how many animals is going to go for the a bowl and how many uh, plates of food and how many um, herbs and how much we're going to sing. Simplicity. Simplicity goes a long way. And if you do a little bit, a little bit, and a little bit, and a little bit, you know, it enhances your spirituality deeply and it reduces all of the osobos and it reduces all of that negativity around you that then you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on an, on an ebo because then you're on top of that you're going to get ripped off for it by whomever and you're sacrificing I don't know how many animals and you're sacrificing I don't know how many plants and uh, you know people think ahead connect with Orisha and things will go well when you live a righteous life everything starts to slowly fall into place when you put positivity you slowly get positivity I don't know how to explain that better to you guys in simpler terms than that. Um, learn to see signs in nature. Learn to see um, things that happen around you. I'll give you a perfect example. Not too long ago, and that's what I mean, two or three days ago, I um, 
came here and I did my morning prayers and I saluted Ochum. It was on a Friday and you know I saluted it, saluted her and just spoke with her and did my little thing, whatever, whatever. So when I left, um, I put on my iPod and the minute that I put on my iPod, one of my favorite songs for Chun comes up. So I was like, oh, this is so nice, you know. And as I get to my destination, uh, I notice as I'm walking in that there's a quarter on the floor, 25 cents on the floor. So I was like, this is beautiful, you know. I spoke with her, I gave her a true, sincere prayer, and I had two signs from her. Besides that, I had an amazing day at work, and I, you know, I had an amazing day with everyone around me, but I saw the signs, you know, I recognized the signs, and I gave thanks for those signs. Learn to see things like that, so your connection with Odisha grows. Um, learn to do daily ritual. I encourage people to talk to the Rishas on a daily basis. You don't have to talk with one particular Rishas on a daily basis if you don't want to, but if you have that deep of a connection with a particular one, sure, talk to them daily. Or go ahead and simply um, talk to one today and another one tomorrow and another one tomorrow and then go back and start a cycle every day, Monday to Legua and then Friday to Chung and then whatever. I have a particular list there that I follow, but that's just me, you know. Uh, do daily ritual by yourself, do daily ritual with your family. That's something that it's rarely even seen. I've never even seen it in our society, in our Orisha community, at least not in the Lukumi one. I hope that in the traditional one it's better, but you know, daily family ritual. If you have kids, do a daily ritual with a leg wine and then just have them offer water, have them offer candy. You know, show kids religion, show kids appreciation. Learn to teach them to love Orisha. You learn to love Orisha. So, I also want to get it across to you guys that the Orishas do not work for you. That irritates the hell out of me every time I get people like that. The Orishas do not work for you, you guys. We are to look up to the Orishas. The Orishas, uh, like, um, connection with the Orishas, it's a two way street, okay? You worship Orisha and they help you. you help them, they help you, you connect with them, they connect with you, you connect with God, God connects with you. And it's not about me owning the Orisha, it's not about you owning the Orisha and the Orisha working for you, that is such a mistaken thing that constantly happens. And people want to do things to Orisha, and I've heard so many stories of people, you know, putting Obadala out in the middle of the sun, or in the middle of the street at noon because you ask for so or the person asked for something and it didn't come through or, or it didn't come through and what the hell you know or people uh some lady there covering a tune with a black cloth because something happened in her family and i've heard about people like yelling at their orishas and kicking their orishas like yo seriously no okay if that's what you're planning on doing to this religion, get out. Don't participate, don't initiate, and don't ruin it. Our Orisha religion and African-based religions are so degraded daily by the media and by society and by saying priests and priestesses of the religion that we don't need any more of that crap. So if you're not going to be a righteous priest or priestess, then just do us all a favor and keep yourself apart from the priesthood. Do spirituality or whatever, but don't initiate and don't give us a bad name, okay? Every time I say to people that I'm a, I am a santero, or I use the word santero, which I hate that word with a passion, it's always a bad, a, a bad, um, uh, Connotation. It's always a threatening thing. It's always a negative opinion that they have, and they, you know, it's always a 
and that happens to everyone. Every time, there's so many people that they're afraid at work to say that they are that they practice Orisha religion, that they practice Santeria because of the bad reputation that it has. And that's all because of our fault and because of the media fault. And we're not doing anything about it, and we're not doing anything about it because we haven't been taught to cultivate spirituality in the home and spirituality in Orisha. And until that happens, I don't see us getting anywhere. Religions of African descent are constantly being ridiculed, and voodoo is constantly uh, seen as evil, and Santeria, every time you say Santeria, the first opinion of people have is beheaded goats, and uh, things in the four corners, and curses, and everything that has to do with African religion is constantly thrown to the side as superstition, it's constantly thrown to the side as uh, cannibalism, it's thought of as a bunch of weirdos and a bunch of crazy black people going insane and uh, you know all these things and it's like you know it's up to us, it's up to us to change the world view of our religion and then of course as it always happens whenever you know, shit hits the fan in other people's lives that talk smack about this religion, then they rush to us and then, you know, lighting candles and, you know, how many chickens, no one cares how many chickens at that point, but everyone talks all this shit about religion constantly. So, and I'm sorry, but I am very passionate about subjects like this, so get over it. Anyways, uh, stop, stop. Stop the hypocrisy, okay? Come to Orisha in good times and come to Orisha in bad times. Trust me, if you learn to come to Orisha in good times, there will be more good times than there will be bad times. And when you have bad times, your consciousness and your awareness will be so much more high-end that you will notice how exactly to go through the bad time without creating more bad times. Spirituality and connecting with Orisha is about living a good life. It's about dealing with life. It's about knowing how to deal. You know, learn to draw a, a attention and inspiration from Orisha. You know, when things go sour at work, think about Ochun and think about the happy times. And don't focus on this person yelling and that person screaming. You just simply laugh and you continue your work. At the end of the day, you know what? If you get mad, they're just going to probably get more mad at you and it's just going to escalate. If you don't get mad, they're still going to remain mad and you're not. So guess what? You win. So if you learn to hold and withdraw your emotions and you learn to hold and withdraw your senses and your perception and your awareness and you learn to connect and focus your mind on Orisha and draw inspiration from Orisha and the universe and everything around you, trust me, your life will go so much better and smoother. Um, so pretty much I just, you know, I'm trying to give you guys the scoop of my personal opinions on that type of stuff. So, uh, I want you guys to remember that um, there is no separation in our religion and in our traditions. We all worship the same entities and we all worship the same way. And I'm mainly speaking to the traditionalists and to the Lukumis and even deeper into the Lukumi religion, I'm talking about the different um, Ilets and the different people. You know, we all worship Ochun. Stop arguing about who has the right way of worshiping her or the wrong way of doing it. We all worship Olokun. Stop arguing about who has the correct fundamento and who has the wrong one. Focus on your fundamental, focus on what you received and focus on your connection with your Orishas and your lineage and your house and your whatever. If we all learn to just simply respect each other, 
our community will be so much more stronger. So just simply learn that there is no separation. We are all just one religion. We're not separate religions. There's no such thing and there's no need to ban each other from rituals. Just to learn to appreciate each other's rituals. Candomblé, traditionalist, Lukumid, and whomever else. You know. I'm trying not to include voodoo or Haitian voodoo and stuff like that because a lot of people consider the, the Loa to be separate from the Orishas and I kind of personally do also so but I'm talking about mainly just two Orisha worshippers you know we all worship Orodumare so learn to just simply live and let live and learn to appreciate our uh, things in common and not our differences you know learn to be stronger in our community to make our community stronger instead of us separating each other more and more you know so that we can uphold African uh, religion and not continuously bring it down you know it is only up to us 